This is an external hard drive, and like many of you, I use these to back up the files from my computer or other devices so I can free up space. And while these are super convenient and very affordable, they also come with a lot of drawbacks. The first of which is that they're not very accessible. I mean, think about it. If you wanted to, say, grab some photos or some videos of that one trip you took, you'd have to go rummaging through where you stored this thing and find it. And then you have to plug it into your computer. And then you have to remember how you organized everything. And then finally, you can find the file that you're looking for. And if we're being totally honest, that's a pretty dumb way of accessing your files. It's just not super friendly. They're also not super reliable. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of people plugging in their external hard drive one day to access a file or to back up their other files and nothing's there. Their computer doesn't even recognize it. And all of the time and effort that they put into backing up their files just goes poof out the window. And then the other thing is you can only connect these to one device at a time, right? So only you can access your files. Your spouse can't access your files. Your children can't access your files. They just live here and only one of you can connect to them at a time. So I'm thinking this isn't a very good way to back up your files in 2024. Now, you could use a cloud storage option like Dropbox or Google, but the problem with those is that as soon as you get into more than a couple hundred uh, gigabytes, you're getting into the terabyte range, they just become stupid expensive and not affordable for most people. You're looking at paying, you know, 15, 20 bucks a month just to back up a couple terabytes of data. And if you're using these and have been using these for a while, you know that that's not going to be enough. And it really, really adds up. I mean, at the end of one year, you're going to be looking at at least $100 just to back up your files. And I'm just thinking that's not a very good way as well. Now, this, on the other hand, is a mini PC that I got on Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. It's not a very powerful PC, but it was super cheap and it works for what we're talking about today. And that is building a home server or network attached storage. So let me give you an idea of why you'd want something like a network attached storage. You put it on your network and any device on your network can access the files at any given time. Most network attached storage operating systems allow you to add storage as you see fit, as you need it, which means that you can have a four terabyte hard drive on there now, and then you add another four terabyte hard drive later, and then another four terabyte hard drive later. And the way these systems work is it will just expand your storage, allowing you to access that data later on. So they're expandable, and you don't have to create a separate hard drive every time you run out of space on one. Because think about it, really all you're doing with these is you're just taking your I don't have space problem and you're kicking it down the road because you're going to fill this up eventually and then you're going to have to get another one and another one and then you're going to have to keep track of all of your hard drives and a network attached storage or home server does that for you. So today we're going to go over the basics of creating your own network attached storage or home server. And I should point out right from the get go that there are solutions out there that just come pre-configured. You can buy a NAS with a couple of hard drives in it already configured from Synology or QNAP or Asister or a few other brands. And that's going to be all you need. You plug that into your network via an Ethernet cable and you're off to the races after some configuration. However, with a little bit more effort, you can save a couple hundred bucks and you can customize it to a lot more than what those simple offerings would give you. So what you're going to need for this is at first, I mean, obviously, you're going to need a computer. Now, this one's got an i3-4100T in it, which is like a 10-year-old processor, and I'm thinking it probably only has two cores, and it only has 8 gigs of RAM. Um, that is way more than enough for what you're going to need this for. Really, all you need is something that has at least two cores, 8 gigs of RAM, and you're good to go. So don't sweat how much of a computer you need. You can look online and you can look at maybe old Dell Optiplexes or HP Elite Desks or something like that and just buy whatever's cheap. As long as it's not a beige tower from 1995, you're probably going to be good. Um, the only caveat to that is it just needs to hold at least a couple of hard drives. So 
look online at Facebook Marketplace or even go down to your local thrift shop and see what they have there. You can usually pick them up for about 20 bucks. After you get your computer, you're gonna need some hard drives. Now, for the uh, NAS operating system that we would want to install, you're gonna want at least two hard drives and then you're gonna want a separate boot drive. So what I would do if I were in your shoes is I would look on websites like Newegg that have deals on hard drives all the time. And then you're also gonna wanna look at maybe serverpartdeals.com. They have old enterprise hard drives that they sell refurbished um, and they come with like a warranty or a guarantee or whatever. And they're stupid cheap. I got a couple of 12 terabyte hard drives for $200 each. So for $400, you can get 24 terabytes of storage or 12 terabytes in a RAID array. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, and then you're just gonna wanna find an SSD, just something super cheap. 256 gigabytes is usually the lowest you can get here and you can get those for like 20 bucks brand new, but you can also buy them used. It's not that big of a deal. So you want those three hard drives, at least two duplicate hard drives and then a boot drive. And the boot drive can be super small. The other ones are just whatever amount of storage you think you're going to need times two. And we'll talk about why here pretty soon. Um, but honestly, you can add more storage later. So don't go too crazy with it. I bought 12 terabyte hard drives. I probably only needed like six. And so I bought twice as much storage as I needed. And I could have saved like 200 bucks had I gone, you know, a different direction and bought smaller hard drives um, to start. So don't make that mistake. Just buy a cheap computer, buy cheap hard drives, and you're off to the races. Now, you're going to want a couple of miscellaneous parts as well that are going to help you out with this. You're going to want like a gigabit network switch at least. Now, you're going to find some things if you go down the home server you know, rabbit hole and start searching for how to build a NAS on YouTube, um, you're going to find people that are like, oh, you want a 10 gigabit NIC and you want a 10 gigabit switch and you want to like outfit your whole house with a whole bunch of, you know, cat 6E or cat 7 cabling or whatever. Forget all of that. Frankly, you're going to be slowed down by the hard drives pretty substantially anyway to about a gigabit anyway. So don't worry about that. Just get a gigabit switch. You can find those usually for about $20 brand new. Anything by TP-Link or Netgear should be just fine. You are going to want some Cat6 Ethernet cable that goes up to 10 gigabits, but you can, you know, do one gigabit super easily. You could do Cat5e. It doesn't really matter. As long as the cable you get is an RJ45 and it supports at least a gigabit of speed, that's going to be more than enough for you. And then you're going to want a six gigabyte flash drive. Um, those are super cheap. In fact, every time I buy a hard drive from Newegg, they send me a 16 gigabyte or an eight gigabyte flash drive. <laughs> and uh, that's all you need. So, you know, you can get one of those either for almost free uh, or for free. And uh, those are super cheap. Uh, and then, like I said, you're going to want that boot drive, which is a cheap SSD that you can find. Anything under $25 is going to be fine. And honestly, that's it. That's all you need. You need a cheap computer. You need cheap storage. You need cheap uh, cabling and a cheap network switch. And then you're fine. You're good to go. You can build an as with those parts. Now, let's go over some of these costs. Um, you can do this super expensive and go all out. And that's that's fine. Um, so let me let me run run you through this really quick. Let's say you get like an Optiplex 7020. That's on the higher end of what you would need for an AS. Um, those are typically going to be like four or even eight core processors. They're going to have like 12 or eight to 16 gigabytes of RAM. You don't need those, but let's say you get one of those. Those run about $75. Let's say you get two 12 terabyte hard drives. I was wrong, actually. I'm looking at my numbers now here. Those were $140 each. So those are $280 total. Let's say you get a 250 gigabyte SSD for $25, a network switch for $20. Uh, and then USB and Ethernet cables for another $20 as well. And if you're keeping track, that will come out to a total of $420, which isn't cheap, right? It's about $200 more than it would be to just get a 24 terabyte external hard drive or a 12 terabyte external hard drive. Um, but it's also $200 cheaper than getting that same configuration in a built for you NAS. So it's right in the middle um, and it allows you to do a massive amount of customizability. So it's actually a really good system. So all you're going to do, honestly, for installing your server and getting it assembled and, and figured out is you just, you know, you're probably going to want to dust it out because it's probably an old computer that you bought for $20, but you dust out the old computer um, and then you put the, the boot drive in there, you put the two hard drives in there and uh, make sure everything is is good there. And then you're going to 
install the NAS operating system, right? So there are a bunch of options regarding NAS operating systems, right? NAS softwares. Um, and, uh, and if you go Googling them, if you do like server software, right, you're going to come up with a bunch of different options. I'm going to save you a bunch of time and say you should probably just start out with TrueNAS. Uh, TrueNAS is open source. It's free um, because they have enterprise solutions so they can give you a home server operating system for free in hopes that maybe one day you'll configure a server on the enterprise and you'll pay them lots of money. So um, yeah, so you're going to want to go with TrueNAS. There are other kind of good options out there, right? Like you could do Casa OS is kind of a new one. You could do Open Media Vault, which is super basic and looks like it was built in 2004 and hasn't been updated since. You could do Unraid, which I hear is just absolutely fantastic, but it can cost up to like $160. It's a one-time fee, but you know, it can cost money. Or you could even go with something as simple as just Ubuntu ser server, but you got to do a little bit more configuration on your part in order to make that work. So honestly, there's a bunch of documents and a bunch of videos for TrueNAS. Um, so I would just go ahead and go with that. Um, it can be installed on as small as a 16 gigabyte SSD. So honestly, literally whatever SSD you can, you can get figured out, just go ahead and install that. Once you get TrueNAS installed, there are really only a couple of things you want to make sure you do. And they're kind of outside of the scope of this video, but I'll kind of put screenshots here to show you what that looks like. But essentially what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to set a static IP address um, because when you install it, you're probably not gonna be connected to your router. Um, and so you need a static IP address to make sure that where you log in is going to be the same space every time. So I think they call those aliases, but you just set a static IP address so that it always, every time it boots up, it's always the same address to get to your server. Um, and then you're going to want to set up a storage pool. Now, a storage pool is where that second hard drive comes in handy. If you have two six terabyte hard drives, then one is going to be you know, writing your data and the one you used. And then the other one is going to be copying that hard drive. So you only are ever using one hard drive at a time. Um, and what that does is if you ever have one of your hard drives that goes out and runs into issues, your other hard drive will just take over and it will send you an alert and say, hey, you had a hard drive fail, go buy another one and we'll rebuild your storage pool. That way you never I mean, it's highly unlikely that you ever run into an issue where all of your data is lost because you had a hard drive crash. Crash. So anyway, that's what I would do. And those are really the only two things that you're gonna wanna make sure you do. From there, you can set up apps like Nextcloud or Jellyfin, or you can just set up an SMB share, which just allows you to access the files on your network at any given time. And you're good to just start back backing up all of your files on your network. You never have to leave your computer. You never have to you know, log into your computer. You can transfer all of your files over Wi-Fi. It's quite fantastic. This video is getting kind of long, so I'm gonna cut it here and I'm not gonna show you how to install TrueNAS. I'm not gonna show you how to set up SMB shares or anything like that um, because I mainly just wanted to go over, here's what you need for a home server. Here's why it's the best option in 2024. And here's all you're gonna need as far as hardware goes to get started with it. So hopefully this video was useful. Now that you know TrueNAS is the way you should go, you only need a cheap computer, don't get more components than you need from the get-go, you're good to start researching a whole bunch of how to build a server um, and, uh, and let me know if you have any comments down below. If you use something other than TrueNAS, let me know why in the comments down below as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down there as well. I'll have links to everything that we talked about and some good examples of PCs that you can buy. And in the, in the video description, feel free to use those. They're affiliate links, they give me some kickback. And until next time, we'll see you later.